three older brothers, uh, all of whom are studs. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it's up. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> and they let him know it. <laughs> Does anybody remember those kind of orange uh, play kids, little hockey pucks that, that you would get in a little... Yes, the hockey players are over here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, my kids, it was the time when roller hockey just started. And they were huge into roller hockey. They loved it, these older brothers. One, six years older than Bailey, the other three years older than Bailey. Watch, listen. And so, they would take these orange little kid hockey pucks, full, fill them full of rice so that you would increase the weight, yep. increase the velocity, and increase the hitting power. <laughs> it's true. And they then dressed Bailey up in cushions from the lawn chair. <laughs> he, was, he was four years old at the time. They put a plastic helmet on him, a baseball glove in one hand, and a little toy hockey stick in the other because they didn't have a goalie. And they shot goals at him from about 20 feet. So Bailey learned to be tough. That was the first time we saw that toughness come out in Bailey. Fortunately, Mom got home before there was any real damage. <laughs> Bailey then, then went on to some better things. He um, became an Eagle Scout. And that was the first indication that we had that, that there was something really going on with Bailey that indicated that there was some real guts and determination that was laying there in this kid that we just hadn't seen yet. And then, you know, it's tough to become an Eagle Scout. I mean, you have to deal with the Scoutmasters. <laughs> you know, and along the way, there were hints and allegations, as the Paul Simon song goes. There were some things that I really don't want to go into. Um, the statute of limitations hasn't run, and our district attorney, <laughs> our district attorney Joyce Dudley's here this evening. <laughs> and then he gets to UC Riverside. Fortunately, doesn't remember his prior experience, which we didn't tell him for at least two or three years. And very early in the process, he manages to meet Trisha. Well, there was another girl, if you want to know, who was stalking him. <laughs> True? Is it not? Yeah. True. <laughs> and that was the start of a chemistry between the two. So what I bring you tonight is what chemistry can do, and, and neither one of them are majoring in it. <laughs> but they had a chemistry, and you could see it. You could see Bailey grow like a weed. He grew so fast. And Trisha, we are so thrilled with you. Has anybody know, has anybody ever heard Trisha say, yeah, yes, that's okay, good. <laughs> has anybody ever heard that? <laughs> well, that's the first thing I heard her say. And we've remembered that forever. And she and Bailey just click. Yeah. And a psychology major, very tough major, and now second year PhD student in that discipline. And Robin DiMatteo, uh, I have to tell you, thank you so much. And this is Bailey's professor and mentor in her PhD progress. Trisha. Trisha. Um, she, I'll tell you that when Trish comes to visit us, there's never a book far away. And she will actually study uh, lots. <laughs> and then there's Bailey. Third year PhD student in computer science. And he is a published author. Woo -woo! And you can go to embeddedsystems.com 
and you will find the website. He is, has given papers international at the age of 27. He went to Dresden, Germany this last January to deliver that paper. Thank you, Frank Bahad. We are so pleased that you wound up being Bailey's mentor. And Frank here is his professor and mentor in his PhD program. Now, I'm not going to conclude this little tirade yet, <laughs> but when I do, I want you to listen for the end, because if you agree with me at the end, I'd like you to all really give it up big time for Bailey and Trish, if you agree with me. But before I get to that point, Bailey, I want to give you a clue about marriage and how you get along. This will aid you in civil discourse going forward. And this is the yes, dear answer. Mary Jane and I established in our relationship a long time ago. The yes, dear answer. And you may have noticed in your relationship, or perhaps you haven't yet, but you will, that in your discussions, events that may be somewhat problematic between the two of you will start from suggestions, and then they'll go to questions, and then they'll go to telling, for instance. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if somebody would take out the garbage? <laughs> or, boy, I, I sure would like to have the garbage taken out. <laughs> um, and, and then the final one is, take out the damn garbage. <laughs> well, the proof of the pudding to this is, yes, dear. That is an answer that you can give at any time that you want. It can almost become automatic. And you both understand that what that really means is that you will consider your options. And you will determine whether that's good for you and the relationship. And then you'll do what you want. So remember, the yes dear. It's a very important. <laughs> so, if you agree, this audience, that what we have is two very special people with two very special minds, then after I say the next statement, you're going to want to cheer like hell, because I'll tell you, the American gene pool needs these two to reproduce. Yeah. 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 Yeah.